So I'm logged in on the dashboard and it says, Laura, it's time to learn more about your DNA story. Your ancestry and trace results based on your DNA are now available. I can either start with ancestry or start with traits. I think I'm going to start with ancestry to see, you know, where I'm from and my DNA and all that. So I'm just going to click on it. And over here it says an overview. Ancestry composition. Your DNA suggests that your ancestry is 64.9% Spanish and Portuguese with ties to nine other populations. All right, so let's see. Hmm, DNA relatives list, traits. Okay, nah, I'm over here, so I'm just gonna click on view report. It says here, the first, it says European, which is 68.2%. Uh, then Southern European, 67.9%. Um, oh, yeah, so I clicked on Spanish and Portuguese, Spain, okay, no, wait, let me go over here. So, underneath Southern European, it says Spanish and Portuguese, which is 64.9%, um, Canary Islands, Spain, Greek and Balkan, 0.4%, so that's that on the map, and then... Broadly Southern European, and then I click on it. It includes the Iberian, Italian, and Belkin Peninsula. I have Broadly European, which is 0.3%. And then I have Sub-Saharan African for 23.2%. There's West African for 16.4%. And then underneath uh, West African, it says Senegambian and Guinean 10%. Nigerian 3.3% broadly West African uh, that's what it says there and then underneath that it says Congolese and Southern East African 5.5% so Angolan and Congolese 5.3% so there's that and then it says, uh, broadly, Congolese and Southern East African, 0.2%. Indigenous American, 6.2%. So this is where it shows me. And then Northern Asian, 0.1%. Okay. Manchurian and Mongolian, 0.1%. Uh, broadly East Asian and Indigenous American, 0.2%. Yeah, and then we have Western Asian and North African. So Arab, Egyptian, and Levantine, 0.3%. Peninsular Arab, 0.3%. North African, 0.3%. Northern West Asia, or Asian, 0.3%. Cypriot 0.3% and then broadly Western Asian and North African 0.4% and unassigned is 0.8% um, we have recent ancestry in the Americas we found evidence of your ancestry in the following locations people from these regions can often trace their ancestry to different historically separate populations. So we have the Caribbean, uh, and if I click on it, it says, um, we did not, well, it says here, Dominican Republic highly likely match. And if I click on here, it says, the Dominican Republic has 32 administrative regions, and we found the strongest evidence of your ancestry in the following 10 regions. So, actually, my, both of my parents are from Dominican Republic. It also says Cuba which is likely match. Um, so this is it for 23andMe. And let's go ahead and view the results for Ancestry DNA. It's DNA story. Discover your DNA story. Discover the places, history, and cultures that shaped you, who you are today, using your, just your DNA. So yeah, I'm just going to click on uh, DNA story because that's where I get my DNA results. So let's 
see how accurate this is compared to 23andMe DNA results. So great news, Laura, your results have arrived. Your results include ethnicity breakdown, DNA story, and DNA matches. And all right, so I'm just gonna over here and it tells me my ethnicity estimate. So your DNA looks most like DNA from these 13 world regions. So uh, we compare DNA against a worldwide reference panel to see which populations your DNA looks most like. So um, first we have Spain for 39%. So we're just going to click on this. Primary located in Spain and your ethnicity estimate is 39%, but it can range from 36 to 55%. Also 17% uh, Portugal. So if I go here, it's just, uh, it just shows me the percentage and then I can see on the map here as well, Portugal, and it shows me a picture, and I can even like learn more about it um, on there. And yeah. And then it says that I'm Cameroon, Congo, and Western Bantu peoples, 11% of those. So those are primarily located in Angola, Cameroon, Central African Republic, Democratic Republic of the Congo, Equatorial Guinea, Gabon, Namibia, Republic of the Congo, Zambia, so 11%, 6% Senegal, uh, which is also inside of Africa, uh, and then 6% Benin and Tongo, uh, which is uh, Benin and Tongo, yeah also inside of Africa as well, and then um, indigenous Haiti and Dominican Republic, which is 5%. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, both of my parents, uh, like I said, are from Dominican Republic, um, and it says here that I'm, uh, you know, of that, the ethnicity estimate for this. Primary located in Basque, uh, this is in Spain, so, this is 5%. Basque history has long been shrouded a mystery. Um, yeah. And then Wales, which is 4%. This is, uh, you know, in Wales. Um, but where is this? United Kingdom, okay, like near England. I'm surprised. Like, the results from... Uh, 23 Me never mentioned England or nothing like that, uh, but this one has, you know, it's 4%, it's not a high percentage, but, you know, it's like near England and Wales. So, and then we have Ireland, which is 3%. Again, like 23 Me never mentioned Ireland either. And then I have 1% for Mali, which is in Sierra Leone. Ivory Coast in Ghana, 1%. That's that, and then 1% Nigeria, and then Eastern Europe and Russia is 1% also. Okay, so these are the results from Ancestry, which is on the left, and then 23andMe, which is on the right, compared. So, like I said, um, uh, Ancestry said Spain 39%, then 23andMe European, which includes uh, Canary Islands, Spain, and uh, Southern European, 68.2%. Uh, and then it says uh, Portugal 17%. Uh, Portugal is included here as 64.9%. Ancestry did mention uh, these down here, they have low percentages, but 23andMe didn't, so this is just the 23andMe, just scrolling there, and then the Ancestry, and and also the Wales, which is in England, uh, that's something else that 23andMe didn't have either in there. Yeah. 
So I can see that both of them have a lot of accurate uh, to them and maybe uh, Ancestry uh, just discovered something that 23andMe didn't. Yeah, it's a big difference, like Spain 39% and then this one says that uh, you know, European, but Spain is in there, it's like 68.2%. So which of the ZNA tests do you think was more accurate? Um, I mean, both of them have a lot of things in common that they say, and then other ones are, uh, you know, like the percentages might be different, but they still have like similar places. Yeah, so those were the results that I got from 23andMe and Ancestry. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to check out the traits. So it says here, explore the genetics behind your appearance and senses. Physical features, cheek dimples. Laura, your genetics predict 52% chance you do not have dimples, 48% chance you have dimples. I don't have any dimples. Clutch chin, 93% uh, chance you do not have a clutch chin. No, I don't. Uh, 56 dandruff. Uh, there's a chance that you had dandruff and then 44% chance you had never had dandruff. I actually had that. And then earlobe type, 86% chance you have detached earlobes, yes. Earwax type, 93% chance you have wet sticky earwax. 7% uh, chance you have dry flaky earwax. Eye color, uh, Laura, your genetics predicts 75% chance of dark brown eyes, 11% chance of light brown eyes, 9% chance of dark hazel eyes, 4% chance of light hazel eyes, 1% chance of green eyes, and then minus 1% chance of, or less than 1% chance of blue eyes, less than 1% chance of greenish blue eyes. So yeah, uh, dark brown eyes. And then finger length ratio, 63% ring finger longer than your index finger, yes. Um, freckles, chance you have a few if any freckles, 27% chance you have a lot of freckles. Um, they actually have no freckles at all, but I have uh, a few beauty marks like right here on this side, but I don't have that. Hair photo bleaching, 51% chance that you do not experience hair photo bleaching. 49% chance you experience hair photo bleaching. No, I don't. Hair texture, 41% chance of slightly wavy hair. Yes, my hair is wavy. Um, and then all of the other ones there. Uh, light or dark hair, 67% chance of dark brown hair. Yeah, dark brown hair. <laughs> Newborn hair, 52% uh, chance you had little or no hair at birth. Uh, and then 48% chance you had a lot of hair at birth. Yeah, I actually had uh, quite a lot of hair at birth, so that's red hair. 99% chance you do not have red hair. Uh, skin pigmentation, 39% chance of light beige skin. I mean, 35% chance. And then 30% chance of light brown skin, 18% chance of olive skin. Um, yeah, and then stretch marks, 75% chance you have stretch marks, 25% chance you do not have stretch marks. I actually do have stretch marks, and those are actually caused by a variety of different reasons. Uh, it's pro it's not always about weight, there's like different causes for everyone because it's different uh, for each one of us, so yeah. Um, and then toe length ratio, it's 52% chance you have a longer second toe, and then 48% chance you have a longer big toe, okay, and then unibrow, 55% chance you have a little bit of a unibrow, um, I actually pluck that, so yeah, widow's peak, 70% chance you do not have a widow's peak, no I don't, and then 30% chance that you have a widow's peak, alright, taste and smell, Asparagus odor detection, likely can smell. Bitter taste, likely can't taste. Cilantro taste aversion, slightly higher odds of disliking cilantro. Ice cream flavor preference, more likely to prefer chocolate over vanilla ice cream. Let me click on this for a second. Okay, Laura, based on your genetics and other factors, you are more likely to prefer chocolate ice cream over vanilla ice cream. And that is not correct. I always like vanilla ice cream better than chocolate. 
ice cream. Um, it's just what I like, so I'm just going to go back there. Uh, sweet versus salty. Luggage prefers salty. Uh, I mean, it just depends on my mood. Uh, <clears throat> and then weird and wonderful. Ability to match musical pitch. More likely to be able to m match a musical pitch. Boonians, less likely than average to have had a boonian fear of heights. More likely than average to be afraid of heights. Um, I'm actually not afraid of heights, but I remember as a child this once just crying because we were going to get on something that was like really high from the ground and I'm like, no, so. Fear of public speaking, about a 50-50 chance of having a fear of public speaking. Um, flat feet, less likely than average to have flat feet. Hair thickness, less likely to have thick hair. Uh, mis misophonia, average odds of hitting chewing sounds. Mosquito bite frequency, likely bitten more often than others. Motion sickness, more likely to experience motion sickness. Photic sneeze reflex, likely no photic sneeze reflex. Wake up time, likely to wake up around 8.21 a.m. Okay, so these these traits are a little fun to read through, but a lot of them may are accurate, but then some are not accurate. It just it depends on them. Um, yeah, but I can say that most of them were accurate for me. So, uh, and then, okay. All right, so I've looked through my ancestry report and my traits, 